Hello and welcome to uh, an Archeo Scoopish video. Uh, I say Archeo Scoopish because my phone is ever so slightly on the fritz this afternoon, so um, I'm going to be recording via this camera. But nonetheless, uh, the top three headlines today are as follows. Headline number one actually comes from the city of uh, Shimotsuke, uh, around 50 miles north of Tokyo in Japan, where archaeologists have uncovered, close to a burial mound or a kofun, um, a, a lovely little artifact. Well, not, not even that little actually, a 69 centimeter uh, glazed statue um, depicting uh, a woman weaving silk. Now, this is important because actually it dates to around about the 6th century and it confirms the presence of the silk industry in Japan. And it's also um, really uh, a really useful artifact because it, it confirms a technological um, uh, fact. That is to say, it's, it's a method of... Um, it confirms a... Hello! In today's Archeo Scoop, my top three headlines are as follows. You'll have to excuse the lack of uh, the typical uh, format, because my phone, unfortunately, is uh, not working this afternoon. Um, nonetheless, uh, today's top three headlines, as I say, are as follows. <laughs> Hello! In today's Archeo Scoop, you'll have to excuse the lack of a map and the typical... Hello, in today's Archeo Scoop, you'll have to excuse the uh, lack of a map and the typical format for Archeo Scoop. My phone isn't quite working properly. Uh, but nonetheless, the top three headlines today are as follows. Um, headline number one comes from the city of Shimotsuke, around 50 miles north of Tokyo in Japan, where archaeologists have actually uncovered a really lovely little artefact, uh, around about 69 centimetres tall. It is a, uh, an unglazed pottery figure, uh, which actually confirms the presence of the silk trade in Japan in the 6th century. Um, it's also a, a nice artifact because it also confirms a method for weaving silk. Essentially it's a woman who is at a loom creating a silk cloth. Uh, this is my favourite kind of artifact, one which has many um, uh, levels of, of information and interest. It's a beautiful artifact in its own right, but also it confirms the presence of the silk industry and a piece of technology, the loom itself. So uh, I just thought I'd highlight this story. I find it quite pleasing. That's headline number one. Headline number two actually comes from Salt Lake City, where um, uh, the owner of a drone business, drone being these remote control, multi-rotored um, robot type flying things, but often with cameras attached, attached. Uh, he is claiming that um, he has found, uh, for the first time in thousands of years, uh, petroglyphs which um, are carved on the wall of a canyon. Petroglyphs being um, rock drawings. Now, um, uh, an archaeologist who's consulted in this story, there's actually an, an embedded video, is saying quite possibly yes, these, these petroglyphs haven't been seen for thousands of years, but actually towards the end of the story someone else is actually uh, contesting that claim and saying, no, 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 I photographed that years ago, you know. But anyway, the point is, this story really highlights the use of uh, drones in archaeology, the way that they are, um, have and will continue to be of, of use to archaeologists, especially in accessing and researching sites which aren't conventionally safe, um, and certainly um, sites which actually are downright dangerous. So um, the, the drones are here to stay, really. I mean, if Amazon are going to be using them possibly for delivering goods across, uh, across the world, then um, archaeologists won't be far behind in using them to research archaeological sites. So I just thought I'd highlight this new story. Uh, whether or not he's discovered them, that's up, to, up in the air a little bit, but at the very least it is the use of drones in archaeology. That's headline number two. Headline number three um, actually is part of this ongoing saga surrounding Richard III. Um, today an inquest was opened into uh, where Richard III should be buried. Essentially the question before the judge or rather, sorry, judges rather, in this case, is whether or not the University of Leicester and Leicester City Council are correct in following standard archaeological practice. That is to say, um, trying to bury, or rather rebury, the remains um, as close to uh, where they were found as possible. And in this case, because he is a king, burying him in the local cathedral, i.e. Leicester Cathedral. Um, 
The, uh, the so-called descendants of Richard III, actually descendants of uh, his family, not direct descendants, and also, let's face it, what, uh, you know, a few out of potentially millions of descendants, certainly hundreds of thousands of people, um, these, the, uh, these descendants have got together and they are claiming that Richard should be buried in York. Apparently he expressed a desire to be buried in York during his lifetime and they would like to see that happen. Um, unfortunately, though, this case continues to offer a soapbox for certain individuals, namely, actually, a Ms. Philippa Langley. She appeared in the King in the Car Park documentary um, and has, to say the least, a very um, strong connection to these remains. Uh, some might even say a slightly bizarre personal connection to these remains. Uh, she actually interrupted proceedings, saying, I'm sorry, I have to say something. So much of the information here is being misrepresented. Uh, outside the court, she actually said that she didn't appreciate the way that Richard III's uh, mortal remains are being treated as an archaeological specimen, to use her words, uh, and she went on to say that the whole ethos of this project was that it wasn't an archaeological dig. It wasn't a trophy hunt. It was about burying someone who uh, was a casual casualty of war. It was a reburial project from the get-go. Um, she added that she would actually go on to take her own um, uh, legal action if the court decided um, essentially against what she thinks should happen to Richard III. Now, I'd just like to take a moment and take issue with her statement there. Um, archaeology is not a trophy hunt, um, and she really should know that. Uh, but it really just highlights the fact that she she has no uh, she has no um, uh, professional understanding of what actually went on surrounding this dig. Um, uh, the archaeologists involved would not have been wanting just to rebury someone. They weren't going to rescue a king and rebury him. They were going to see what was there. And it just so happened that they did find Richard III. But also, as well, it's worthwhile remembering he had actually been buried. He'd been buried in a church in Leicester. Um, over time, the church was demolished, and yes, a car park was built over that church, or what remained of that church. But the fact of the matter is, he had been buried. Um, and uh, the idea of, um, of this being a, a rescue operation to rebury him, it grossly twists the, the perspective of archaeology and also the, the, the professionalism of archaeologists. Uh, they, were the go they were doing an archaeological investigation and neither is that a trophy hunt or a rescue mission. It is uh, an investigation to see what is there. Um, Ms Langley continues to put forward her perspective, her agenda um, and uh, force her view Onto, onto these remains. And for my part, I cannot wait until they are um, safely ensconced. They're, they're, they're buried, whether it be in Leicester, uh, in York, or most unlikely, I suppose, in London. Um, but uh, I cannot wait until they are buried, because then hopefully we can return a little bit of dignity to uh, this story, because as it stands, it's becoming a bit of a circus and something of a farce. And uh, those who have um, very particular agendas are being allowed far uh, more of a voice than potentially they might otherwise have. Uh, and uh, the only reason why I'm saying this is because she is very definitely twisting archaeology and archaeologists in that statement. Uh, we are not trophy hunters. We are uh, scientists, we are um, hu uh, hum uh, human scientists, um, and we try to understand a site through an investigation. We don't simply go there to go, look what I found, and then put it on display. Anyway, my uh, my little um, uh, little rant to one side. There's my top three headlines from today, hopefully, or rather, sorry, of the week, sorry. Uh, hopefully uh, you will enjoy reading about them. In addition to those, there are also some other news stories in the video information below, as always. Uh, last week I wasn't able to bring you an Arceus scoop because I was uh, really rather busy. So this week there's a few more headlines than usual. So please do take your time and enjoy those stories. Uh, today, um, in fact this week, has been another busy week, but hopefully in the next couple of weeks we may all reach a plateau and um, a couple more videos will be coming your way. Actually today was the first day out in the field with the HER Burnside project. So working with the local college and the Historical Environment Records Office in Newcastle to try and record urban archaeology here in Walls End. And um, today we went out simply trying to observe where this archaeology might be. 
to the next week we can go out and actually record it. And we had a wonderful time exploring the streets of Wall's End. In fact, one of them was the street on which I live. Um, and, uh, and the kids and the teachers alike actually all had a great time spotting actually the differences, the contrast between one street and another, trying to understand already uh, um, uh, a long forgotten certainly in the, in the minds of, of the current residents, a long forgotten social um, sort of space as much as anything else, the way in which people lived in Wall's End in the past. Um, so, so far it's going well, and I'm happy to say everyone is, uh, is, is enjoying it. Anyway, as ever, uh, please do enjoy those news stories. Have a great weekend, and until next time, bye-bye.